Hey everyone, this is Evgeny and today we are checking together what a journey, a new AI agent from IntelliJ is. So the thing we would like to understand today how differs this uh, new AI agent from the other competitors like Cursor AI or Windsurf Cascade and if it brings some value on the market. In general, if you compare the window from Juni to other AI agents, it looks pretty similar and uh, you have the same, you have the place where you can type a prompt, you can add something, you have the still two modes, code and ask, like uh, talking and working. You have a brave mode, which is uh, kind of running all the tools in automatic mode, like you believe that Juni is on your side and performs everything the best way. Uh, but in reality it's a bit different and the overall feeling I have working with this for some time that uh, it's kind of, uh, it tends to be very simplistically, uh, it tends to provide a very simple behavior where all the details are hidden from you. Like as an example, or just looking at that, tell me uh, which LLM or model is being used here and it's not clear, right? And you have no way how to select, how to pick something which is better for you, for example. So you kind of have to believe that what Juni is doing is the best thing. Everything else is on the same state, I would say. Like, for example, where are the memories? And you don't have any configurations here, you don't have any memories, you don't have any rules. And the most important things this day, probably, uh, where are the MCP servers I can configure? So they're not there at all. I don't know if this is an intentional thing or they are just developing these things and it will appear later, but at the moment it's not there at all. It's kind of, uh, it's an AI agent and who knows what it thinks about the situation around. And when you just start Juni, you have these several options to start with, like you can generate a project specific guidelines, uh, as an example, create a list of tasks to improve the project, analyze requirements, implement the improvements according to the task list or something. And you might think this is kind of a new flow starting performing for you, uh, something very useful, but the reality is a bit different because what you have under the hood, uh, under each button, is just a prompt hidden. And it's nothing else, it just gives you some ideas how you can start with something. So if I click on it, uh, then the prompt will be passed it into this uh, input field and I even can edit it and add some details if needed. And basically that's it. Another interesting thing, if I run the query here, it starts doing something, but let's stop it and go back. So this is a list of my recent queries and see, I don't have these buttons at all. So uh, I don't know how useful are those because you can apply them only one time, right? And after that, you have no way other than just removing all this uh, history. So only after that they appear. What else is not so convenient here? I would say the uh, context selecting. For example, I can type my queries and I'm used to use this add symbol where I can see the pop-up and I can search for files, classes, code snippets, something else like objects which I would like to mention. And it's not here. Uh, the only way you can do it, you can click on plus and select something from either from recent files and context or search for project files. And then you have this uh, pop-up window dialog where you can either dig into the uh, structure, your project structure or search by names. And it's not so convenient, I would say, because at the end it's not inlined in the context, uh, but it's kind of put more in the overall context of the whole prompt, and uh, then it's not clear. For example, I used to create my prompts where I'm mentioning specific files in the context, they're inlined, it's clear what I mean, and so on. And here it's kind of, I have to refer this file somehow that is global context. And just imagine you have like multiple files there, how can you distinguish in your prompt, which one do you mean? So it's not really not so convenient, I would say. And since you have the whole file here, it's not possible at all to, to put only a smaller snippet from files. So there's no way, like I'm used to, I'm used to another technique, for example, I'm here in my uh, file and I would like to work on this piece only. I can send it directly to the chat. And it's not here, the one you see here is from Cascade, it's not from Juni, so there's no way. And uh, also, for example, I cannot drag and drop it. Well, I can, but just nothing happens. Uh, I don't see here, I, how can I attach, uh, for example, image to analyze, how can I add uh, some web requests 
to mention in my prompt so nothing is here really it's really not convenient i would say it's kind of a uh, very old way uh, we used to use in the past like uh, maybe one half year ago but these days we want to see something more advanced i would say and probably the most important thing which is missing because of this simplicity just looking at the screen and tell me uh, what's my statistic here like how many requests or prompts i still have in base on my monthly plan maybe or something i don't see this information at all like it's not here it's not clear for me uh well i have an impression okay like junior tells me you can do whatever you want you can run whatever number of requests you want like prompts or tools everything is available for you but i I don't think this is true really because just can imagine I created something which uh, constantly posts uh, in June requests I'm pretty sure they will block me for after some time right so there are limits definitely but they're not shown to me and this is a really important question because many people asking they are trying to find a tool that fits better to them they are really interesting to know like how much they can do with the tool and one very important point is how, how, how many requests I can send and how, how, how much of the work the tool will let me to finish and the information is not here like it's hidden again kind of for simplicity you don't know what you can do all right uh, what do we have next here we have these two modes I mentioned that already it's uh, this classical from AI agent world already we have uh, talking mode and working mode and uh, this is really different from other agents like in Cascade or Cursor because uh, what I used to it was really always a question for me like how they distinguish because if you take a Cascade from Windsurf as an example the only difference I saw that it was kind of uh, well the agent itself was not aware of the different modes it's only that tools were not allowed for some in some specific mode in talking for example and then the behavior was that okay uh, since agent wasn't aware of that he was trying to apply some tools uh, they were failed cancelled and then after a couple of tries then the agent uh, was saying something like okay i kind of do this then i'm switching to just writing you what you have to do manually and that was the only difference and here the situation is completely different uh, they are really 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 separated so coding and asking are different here and this is really interesting because it's really new experience for me I never saw this before and in general if you're talking about asking mode it's uh, it's a normal way you type your queries it can it has access to tools just uh, not to modify something but it can research your code base for example it can analyze your files uh, make some assumptions and just a normal kind of dialogue you here have right so let me maybe ask something and see it has thinking fast so it decides okay that based on my question this is a project over your request it's kind of categorization and it starts working and uh, one thing I would say it's lower than it's it was really interesting it was really an important question uh, because agents tend to be slower than direct talking to LLMs and this one is more it's it's even slower I would say and another thing what's interesting here it, it uses tools a lot of tools are CLI tools right and it runs in terminal and what you can do you can open the terminal and see in the lifetime mode like uh, the way how the agent asks something for some information like for files for something else so anyway this is the way how it works it gathers the information it's not trying to modify anything and at the end I will show one thing also okay it's there uh, it was really slow I would say because uh, I don't know a lot of different requests calls and at the end of the day okay also what I'm used to I used to uh, read all the answer here but it's not here I have to uh, the scratch file was created for me so I can open it and it's in the list of scratches in IntelliJ so it's uh, it's here and here we have all the project overview so it generates the file name with markdown and it it listed all the features it found and etc et so this is the way how talking is working here
and again this is interesting this is not clear for me like okay the job is finished i can click on done i can start it again probably removing all the results and just repeating it i can decline i don't know what's that and why would i need it i can just go back and it's still it's done here right and what's interesting if i'm in a code mode that's what i wanted to show you and the same kind of question so my expectation would be that it would perform the same kind of activities like uh, researching the project and telling me the results. Uh, but in code mode, you, you are enabling tasks in Juni. And what's happening first before doing anything, Juni creates a plan how to achieve this task, how to, to get the results you ask for. So I'm clicking on it. So see the difference? It still named the project and now instead of just doing the research it tries to create a plan how to perform your changes so it, it's there at seven points here and then start working point by point like uh, so example readme file it's there it's processing it and once it's done you can see okay it was finished and then starts the second step so you can see like real steps okay second step was finished then number three is on the way and I'm really curious what will be the result of that. Uh, probably the same file will be created, right? Because we are not asking to modify anything here. And see, like, our, uh, in step three, it created two subtasks, A, B, no, A, B, C, and D already. So it can add tasks. And this is the way how really AI agents should work in a basic. And E already. So a lot of different subtasks sub, 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 sub created here. All right, everything is finished. We are on the number four. And it's interesting. See, since it was a coding work, right? Not a talking. We don't have a lot of information there because like, what's the result? It's just the task manager is something. That's it. No file, no uh, kind of analysis, nothing. So this is really interesting. They really uh, separated these two. So you're asking and here you have kind of report or maybe maybe this is the thing you can divide what you want to talk or to code. So talking, this is about getting a report at the end, which you can use somewhere for analysis, for example, for creating an architecture or something else. Coding is a real task. It doesn't mean that something uh, other than code will be modified. All right, <clears throat> maybe let's take a couple of examples with doing real coding stuff, like auto-completion kind of thing. And for that, uh, let's pick something like create a task request. First, let's try to modify a single file. And uh, again, so see, this is the problem. How should I, uh, I, I cannot drag and drop the file. I cannot select partially uh, the code snippet here and move it to the prompt. I have to, Memorize, okay, this is a great task request. And here I should search it. Add it to the context. Then probably I should refer to it by using this class or something. So add to this class. And again, for me, it's a question. If I have several classes, how should I refer them? And we are in a code mode and I'm running it again. And we do have a plan and modify the create request, uh, update the class javadoc and run tests to ensure the changes don't break uh, existing functionality. And see, this is kind of, again, this is a agent, so it's hidden. It decides on its own what needs to be done. I never ask to run tests, right? I never ask to uh, create javadoc, for example, but it kind of, it's, it's a real person, kind of uh, quite professional to know that, okay, some other things need to be done, if I, if I, if I, even if I never requested for them. And another thing which you have to think about always, this is a code and it will create a plan for you. So uh, sometimes it's really funny because let me create a file. I will show a very simple example. Sample txt in the root of the folder, and I'm asking This is pretty simple task and it's clear it will be removed but again remember about planning we cannot just simply remove it we do have a comprehensive planning on that campaign of five points minimum this is the the rule of juni working on coding mode okay 
and in terminal we can still again see the progress of that so we are verifying that the file really exists here then we are trying to remove it and then we have to verify that it was properly removed it's a very safe way to remove the stuff and run the command okay it was verified and the file has been successfully removed all right and then we have again to check that file is not here and there's an absence that's really nice so it was successfully removed from root of the folder but just take a look at proper plan was generated on that and it's interesting theme because uh, you never know how the agent behaves just the last example before finishing our session I'm asking to remove the same file which is already removed and I'm in coding session and I'm running it and the same kind of plan but this time we have four points uh, we're gonna submit the changes for some reason and see the file was not found so we are checking for hidden files that maybe it's a hidden thing and then we search for entire project for sample txt even though I said that it's in a root folder it's really interesting and again this is the good example of that of the fact that journey takes every single task on its own and decides uh, the best way to process even if you're asking for a simple file and uh, I would expect just uh, run the command remove and that's it like saying okay it's done but no 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 no. you have to check if files here if not here maybe it's hidden maybe the whole project maybe you have to check internet who knows like where you store this file and uh, it's waiting for me and you have no way how to control that really you have to believe that this this thing doing something good working for half an hour and take a look at that it wasn't found just it's really interesting the file was not found and Ginny said well but I still have this feeling I need to remove something how can we proceed okay let's create this file let's do this so we can safely remove it all right take a look at that uh, we were trying to remove a file that was not here in the folder root at all and what's happened we had a plan for seven points for doing this and somewhere in the middle we decided okay file is not here but no we can't report that we have to create it so it's here and then we can remove it that's really logical thank you Juni thank you all right that was our short presentation of uh, this new AI agent from IntelliJ and the name is Journey I hope I pronounced it in the correct way I never heard it the right way uh, anyway we will, we will know it later probably and what kind of thoughts I have after this short demonstration well first it's really it differs from other agents that's true uh, they try to make it different uh, the interesting thing the talking and doing modes are really different and they're performing stuff in a different way as well like again in the coding mode uh, a plan created all the time and this is really impressive like we never saw this before uh, from the minuses uh, I think uh, they try to create kind of one button application where you don't have control over the things like and you should believe that uh, what the agent is doing is the best way for you so you cannot control which model you are using what are your limits um, you don't uh, you cannot configure anything else like uh, rules memories MCP services it's just simply not there uh, we still have some user experience issues I would say it's really hard to add files to mention something to add code snippets but maybe this is thing that will be improved in the future uh, I think uh, based on my personal feelings it's it's working slower well it always was a case for AI agents with comparison to just uh, code outcome completion things but this one I think it's even slower than cursor and uh, cascade or cloud code uh, but again we are going to give it a try and check in, re in real prompts how they perform and compare them but other than that it was interesting approach uh, well we will see uh, time shows us if the approach works or not but so far is good thanks and it was Evgeny me uh, thanks for watching till the end uh, write your opinions on what you saw and let's keep in touch and see you in the next videos see you and bye bye